Hello and welcome, my name is Celine and this is my very first knitting video or video of any kind for that matter, which makes me very nervous, but I document and post a lot of my knits on Instagram, so I thought I would try a knitting podcast. I'm already quite late in the year, but I thought I would film a what I knit in 2023 just so you can kind of see what I enjoy making. I'm a crocheter as well. I know that the title of this says what I knit, but since it's only seven crochet pieces, I thought I'd put them in anyway. By the way, I'll be talking about what I'm wearing later on in the video since this is something I knit in 2023. The first big garment I knit last year was the Olive Cardigan by Knitting for Olive. For this cardigan, you knit top down. It has the raglan increases. Uh, the body is knit flat and the sleeves are knit in the round. It has this absolutely beautiful leaf motif. It was really fun to kind of find my own way to read charts and make sure that I wouldn't accidentally read the wrong row. What I like to do is I read them off of my iPad, I zoom in about 10 stitches at a time, and then I'll move to the next 10 stitches once those are over. And then I also highlight the row that I'm on so that I don't accidentally start reading another row. And I find that this is quite a foolproof method. I've not really made any major mistakes. Um, doing it like this. Despite me absolutely loving this garment, there are quite a lot of things I'm not in love with and these are all due to me being quite inexperienced with knitting at the time. So the first thing that I don't like about this is that it's too warm but too cold at the same time. I'll explain. <laughs> I used one strand of Baby Merino in Peanut and two strands of Kid Silk in Vanilla by Drops. It is so heavy and warm that I can only wear it when it's really cold. However, when it's really cold, I can't really cover my chest properly. As you can see, this doesn't have buttons. It's not really a wrap cardigan or anything. So when I wear it, the front of my body is uncovered and that makes it cold. Obviously the solution to this would be to put a button band and be able to close it. But another error that I made being a new knitter is that my bind off isn't stretchy at the body. So I can't really wrap the whole way around my body. So I'd have to unravel the bind off, but I don't have any extra yarn. So I'm not gonna do that. Also, I think the shade washes me out a bit. The drops mohair is very hairy, which I don't love, especially when it's held double. If I were to knit this again, I'd either knit it with one strand of mohair or I would just pick a mohair that I know is less hairy. To be honest, I'm really happy with how it stands anyway. I'm still gonna wear it. I love my olive cardigan and I really recommend the pattern. It's still a very treasured piece in my wardrobe. It was so much fun. The next garment I knit in 2023 is the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. And this was the biggest success of 2023. I've not worn anything else more than I wore this one. I knit this in Sanus Garn Tin Silk Mohair in the shade 8581. So this is Mohair Knit Double, and this was my first time knitting something in slightly nicer yarn. And oh boy, can I tell the difference? This mohair specifically has a percentage of wool, which makes it extra warm and extra wooly and i absolutely love this pattern the fit is impeccable the finishing touches are really really gorgeous once again this is knitted top down you start out flat and then you join at the v-neck and then knit round from there knit the sleeves in round bind off the sleeves and body with an i-cord edge pick up the stitches at the neck and put an i-cord edge on there as well it's got a lot of positive ease so if you're someone with sensitive skin and you want to try a mohair garment something like this would be great because it's not tied up against the skin and also it's got plenty of room for you to put something underneath it as well also i must mention the wear of this yarn i've worn this so many times and i've never deep hilled this and there is no sign of wear it's really impressive 100 percent recommend the cumulus plus so 2023 was the year I discovered Petite Knit and her Sophie scarves. Throughout the year I made three. This one is the first one I made using some yarn I had in stash. This is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk in the shade 20. With Sophie scarves, I don't follow the number of increases recommended. I just increase until I want to. The second one I made is the sage green one. I knit this with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in Dusty Artichoke held with one strand of Drops mohair in the shade 34. And then my favorite Sophie scarf that I made is this deep navy blue one. I made this in Cardiff Cashmere Classic in the shade 647. Sophie scarves are actually really great for me because I'm someone who suffers the cold weather. So these are great accessories. I really do recommend this pattern. It's a classic and I think everyone should have at least one mini scarf in their handmade wardrobe. So you know when I said the Cumulus blouse was probably the biggest success for me this year? I think maybe, maybe the Marvel sweater was more of a success. Oh my goodness, do I absolutely adore this sweater. This is a very simple, super chunky, top-down, 
raglan sweater one evening i just decided to go into my yarn stash and cast on the marble sweater i think the color came out kind of rustic looking At all times i was holding four strands of yarn two drops air one strand of some type of cotton and one strand of brushed alpaca silk by drops and then i sort of alternated um colors as you can see there are some lighter sections throughout but i love this so much that i want to knit a second one this year it is so cozy and comfortable and snuggly it's a blanket but not that heavy and chunky where i struggle to move around or anything which I've had that problem with some other chunky sweaters. I love this pattern. I then finished crocheting the Alexa top by Pearls PH. I don't actually have this garment with me. I left it in Italy just because it's never really warm enough to wear it here in the UK, but it is so cute. I love the yarn choice for this. I think the pastel variegated pink, blue and white yarn is adorable and really fits the style of this design. I get a lot of compliments when I wear this, I think for the ruffled kind of peplum section. The yarn I used was King Cole Giza Cotton Sorbet in the shade Candy 2476. This one is also a made to measure pattern, so it's super size inclusive, which we absolutely love. At this point of the year, I think I was on a crochet top roll. I also finished my Betty top. This pattern is by Pearls PH as well. I absolutely love the fit of it. I think it's so flattering on the body. I don't consider this a corset top, but it does have a couple of features that mimic that. Once again, it's made to measure and the designer actually includes several different options in terms of design for the sleeves. If I remember correctly, she also includes instructions for a dress or a peplum version as well. You can get so many different types of tops out of one pattern. I also put some pearl buttons, which I thought were super girly. And I also love the color that I picked. Purple is not a color I've ever gone for before. So that was very exciting for me. When I was putting together the list of things I made this year, I realized there were so many gift knits. So the first First one for this year that I don't have with me obviously are the Sunday Socks by Petite Knit that I knit for my dad. I used Drops Merino Extra Fine in the shade 37. This was the first time I ever knitted a pair of socks so they weren't perfect. I don't love the yarn choice for this project as I used a 100% superwash merino wool which obviously doesn't have any nylon content so they're just like bed socks you can't really wear them in your shoes but also i've learned the hard way this year that superwash merino really grows with blocking so i tend to steer away from superwash this next garment is camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear it hit a lot of firsts for me first time using pure silk yarn first time using knitting for olive yarn first time knitting a camisole and first time knitting a my favorite things knitwear pattern. <laughs> As I said, I used Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the shade Dusty Artichoke, which is their most famous and popular colorway. This is knit top down. You start with the four triangles and then join everything to work the body in the round. It's knit on very small needles. If that's something you're not used to, it can be a bit discouraging, especially because it's in broken ribs. So it's not the quickest stitch at all. I was very fascinated with the yarn itself and how it feels and all its properties. I think this yarn works perfectly for this type of garment as it is a drapey garment. The only thing with this one is that over time, silk does get a bit looser. So I'm feeling like the eye cord straps are kind of growing a little bit. So I find myself needing to adjust it back because it always kind of drops down next summer i'm going to cut and unravel some of it and then just kitchener stitch it back so that the straps are a bit shorter and more comfortable this is not a bra friendly camisole what i do is wear a pretty bralette underneath that is obviously showing but it's almost like part of the look i guess i cannot wear it without a bra um it's just too loose so that's just something to keep in mind if you prefer bra friendly camisoles i'm so glad this is part of my wardrobe it's such a special piece and i love it continuing with my petite knit era i went for the penny gloves such a fun quick simple knit i obviously knitted these in my favorite sage green color and I think they are really cute accessories to have. I also had a lot of fun trying fingerless gloves out. I've never done gloves before. These are really nice for winter mornings when it's really cold and I'm in the tube and I wanna knit or I wanna, you know, use my phone. So yeah, 
I really enjoyed these. Another major success this year was my blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. When she released the first photo of this, I completely fell in love with this. I bought the yarn before the pattern came out and then I started knitting it the day the pattern came out. So I was really committed to this design. There's a massive fold there because obviously I store these folded, I don't hang them, but hopefully that's okay. You knit this pattern top down. It has a saddle shoulder construction and it is really quite simple. The boat neck that results from this construction is so flattering, dangerous, Tea and classy. I can't really remember what the recommended lengths were, but I knit the sleeves really long and they are slight bell shaped. I think it's so elegant. It makes me feel like a little princess, honestly. This is two strands of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the shade Ice Blue. It's so lovely to wear on cold summer nights, especially. Silk has all these amazing properties that makes it an exceptional fiber all year round, really. The next garment I made is the Jasmine Top by Off The Hook that I made for my friend Jasmina. It was actually my second time knitting this top. The first version I made of this was actually the first top I ever crocheted, so it is very beginner friendly. For this one I used Drops Muscat in the shade 09, which is a mercerized cotton which has a really lovely sheen. In general, I prefer knitted tops just because they are a bit thinner and they have a nice drape. That's something crochet doesn't always give because the stitches are thicker and more structured. I have my own jasmine top and I don't really wear it that much for that reason but this really comes down to personal preference but I think overall it came out really pretty. I absolutely love the flowery looking cuff sleeves and the tube crop top. You can scrunch it at the front. I think it's really adorable. The next item I made is this crochet bag. This is the Helena bag by Mermaid's Yarns. And I love this for the adjustable straps, so you can literally wear it so many different ways. You can see from the video I just played that I found this outfit that perfectly matches the shade and I think is so cute. <laughs> for this one, I use Drops Cotton Light in the shades 01 and 34. I love all of Mermaid's Yarns patterns and this design is no exception. I would love to install a button or some sort of zipper for this, but yeah, it's adorable. You begin at the bottom and work your way up and then finish the straps. The straps are also detailed with these bubble stitches. The next garment I made, I don't have with me because it was a gift knit. It's the Northland sweater by Petite Knit that I made for my brother. For this one, I used Drops Nepal in the shade 0206. It was my first time doing a saddle shoulder construction, so that was really interesting. That's one thing that I love about knitting is that any pattern you do, you learn something. Another major thing that I learned with this design is the importance of gauge swatching. I gauge swatched really badly before this. I knit for like 25 hours and then realized that it was too tight. So I had to undo the whole thing. I also quite struggled with the length of the sleeves. My brother tried it on before I blocked it. The sleeve length was fine. I blocked it. It really grew. So I had to unravel it, knit again, but then it was a bit off again. I don't know. I think I knit and unraveled the sleeves like three times, but finally got it in the end. Unfortunately, this yarn does pill a lot. But despite that, I'm really happy with it anyway. I don't think my brother really cares. <laughs> also, he's my brother. It's not like I'm gonna knit him just one thing in his lifetime. He's always gonna be there. And I already have the yarn for his next piece and it is good yarn. As always, I had no trouble going through the petite knit pattern. So overall, really happy with it. I think it's really good, simple design. The fit is really nice. Even on me, when I finished it and tried it on, I really like the look of it. So another gift knit this year was a cumulus blouse for my mom. For this one, I used two strands of Drops Kid Silk Mohair in the shade 34. I think overall it's wearing quite nicely. There is only one little issue with this one though. I knit my cumulus blouse in a size small and I thought the v-neck was just perfect. When I knit the second cumulus blouse in size large, I thought the v-neck was a bit too deep. Compared to the size small, size large has a deep v-neck. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think at the time I was really scared to do something different than what the pattern states but looking back i should have knit the v-neck a bit higher up this year my cousin had a baby so i obviously had to prepare and make some baby knits i made anna summer cardigan by petite knit using drops baby merino and then i also made her petite knits dagmar's blouse the yarn i used was dmc 100 percent baby in the shade 031 there's something about knitting something in miniature that's just so wholesome the ruffles and it's just these two garments honestly were so so cute unfortunately for both of them i used super wash yarn that grew 
so much with blocking so they ended up being too big i literally knit the newborn size and it came out to be like a six month old baby size which is fine because the baby's gonna still wear them eventually it's so cute to see a baby with something you've knit them it's very addicting if i have to be honest i actually had trouble with anna's summer cardigan this was the one petite knit pattern that i had trouble with i think because it's an older pattern i couldn't understand the charts to be honest i Figured something out in the sleeves, but the body is not perfect, but I was still happy with them. I topped it off with some really nice wooden buttons. So I was very happy with my baby knits. <laughs> Next, I made petite knits ruffle socks. And I absolutely love these. They're so cute. It really works with the coquette style that's in right now. This is hand dyed yarn by Life in the Long Grass. I can't find the shade name right now, but I'll put it on the screen. These socks are knitted cuff down and they have a short row heel, which is not my favorite. I find that it's a bit too snug on my heel, um, but it still fits. This yarn does pill. Um, I don't have a lot of knitted socks, so I don't have much to compare it to, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So I've recently depilled these, but you can still see some wear. This is at the toe. And I don't think I wore these more than 10 times, but everywhere else I think they look really great and they're absolutely adorable. I definitely did have second sock syndrome with these. I actually just have it in general with any sock I knit. I just knit the first one and then it takes me about four months to build up the courage to begin the second one. But I managed to knit them both, which is great. For my baby cousin that was born in August, I also made some baby ruffle socks. The pattern from Petite Knit doesn't have a newborn size, or at least it didn't at the time that I was knitting them. So what I did is I used the adult version as reference, and then I adjusted it to a newborn sock stitch count. And for that, I just use a random free pattern that I found on Ravelry. Oh, and I used the leftover yarn from my own ruffle socks. So the baby and I match, which is the most important thing. The next piece is a crochet piece I tested for Mermaid's yarn, and it is her fake knit beanie, which is literally what it says on the tin. It is a crocheted beanie that mimics the knit stitch. I did have trouble with this beanie just because I'm a really tight knitter and crocheter in general. This is all made up of slip stitches. So I was slip stitching too tight and it was a nightmare in the beginning. But once I understood how to go about it using a way larger hook, it worked just fine. And I really recommend this pattern and all of Magdalena's patterns really, because they are really something different, um, different than any other pattern I've ever tried. They're also made to measure, which is incredible. And for this one specifically, you can use literally any yarn you like, any weight, chunky, sport, fingering, lace, whatever. But yeah, the fake knit beanie. The next garment was a test knit for Not A Day Without Knitting. This is the Ilana camisole. When the designer shared the first post on this, I was completely in love and I felt so lucky to be picked for the test knit as well. I also love the context I knit this camisole in. I was on a holiday in Tuscany with my family when I was testing this. So I have all these really beautiful visual memories associated with this camisole. It's knitted top down, you start with the four triangles and you knit the body in the round. It's got these beautiful one by one cables which you don't even need cable needles for. There's some optional shaping at the bust which is actually my favorite feature. The one thing I would change next time is I wouldn't knit this using silk. Silk doesn't really have a lot of memory in the sense that it naturally grows and expands. Even when you wash it, it doesn't have that memory to bounce back to its original form. So as this design is meant to be a tight fitting garment, as I'm wearing it, it's becoming a bit more drapey. I think if I hadn't opted for bust shaping, the silk would be really good for this. Next time when I'll be knitting a fitted camisole, I just won't be going for silk. I'll be trying something else. I'm generally quite careful with tank tops and camisoles. I don't love how they look on me a lot of the time. But this one is the most flattering camisole my body has ever worn. It is gorgeous. The next garment is the Aura Top by Rose Knitwear. And it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love this one. I discovered Rose Knitwear and I really recommend you check her out because she's probably one of the coolest designers out there right now. So this is her Aura Top. It's this veil of beauty. <laughs> I used soft silk mohair by Knitting for Olive in the shade Dusty Artichoke. I only used two and a half skeins, so it's quite an affordable project as well, which I love. I wasn't obsessed with the construction in the sense that you knit this bottom up and there's a lot of seaming, which isn't my favorite thing, but the end garment is so worth it. I get so many compliments when I wear this one. It is so trendy, so beautiful. I knit the sleeves quite long. It has a slight bell shape 
at the wrist. It has once again that boat neck, which is very feminine. My bind offs are a bit too tight. So next time I would be careful to bind off way looser. And yeah, I'm obsessed with it. There's nothing else I can say other than I adore it. My colleague also had a baby this year, so I crocheted a nice sunny yellow daisy granny square bucket hat. The tutorial is from YouTube. I'll put the link down below. But the tutorial is actually for an adult hat. I just used a thinner yarn, so the bucket hat ended up being way smaller and baby size. The next garment I made is actually the one I'm wearing. Finally, I can speak about this. This is the Je ne sais quoi cardigan by Moonchain. I was so honored when Amanda asked me to test this. So the body is crocheted, the sleeves are knitted, and the cuffs are crocheted. For the crochet parts, I used Drops Soft Tweed in the shade 02, and then the knitted sleeves, I used two strands of Drops Brushed Alpaca Pack of Silk in the shade 01. It is a made-to-measure pattern. You have the option to go for a tie closure or a button band. If you're not a knitter, there is the option to just crochet the sleeves as well. And I really enjoy the yarn choice for this project. I think the yarn selection was just perfect for what this garment is meant to do. September was a really busy month that worked for me, so I needed a project that took my mind off of everything. I needed something very different, something that I'd never done before. So I resorted to rose knitwear and found the scribble top pattern. Give it a second. Look at this stitch. It is amazing. Not only it's a very out there stitch for me and out there design, this is unlike anything else I've made before and not necessarily something I would go for. I also decided to go a bit crazy with the yarn. I bought this yarn in Italy and they don't have an Instagram or anything. They're called Silke by Arvier. It's the Formentera yarn in the shade 75, which is a linen and cotton blend. And you can really mistake it for Nora yarn. It really looks like Nora yarn, even the way the colors kind of develop throughout. This was so much fun to make and it was the perfect project for me at the time. I've still not worn it because it's been too cold to wear it since I made it, but I'm really excited to see how I'm gonna be able to style it with the pieces in my wardrobe. Yellow is not necessarily my color, especially when I'm not tanned. <laughs> But I'm so glad I made this. This was such a fun experience. And just making the stitch was so satisfying. It literally looks like a little art project. Scribble top is such a good name. This is what I meant with Rose Knitwear. She just plays with texture in a way I've never seen anyone else do before. I would say that my personal favorite designer of 2023 was Rose Knitwear. I feel like as an avid knitter, it's normal to feel the urge to try out your own design. So that's what I did. This is what it looks like. It is a very, very simple top-down sweater, saddle shoulder construction. What's special about this is that it has no ribbing and it uses a special technique that avoids the stockinette from rolling. I really intend to finalize this pattern and release it this year. I just was really not happy with my yarn choice. I used Drops Wish. It just looks a bit cheap, if I have to be honest. It's obviously pilling a lot as well. I wanted to try it with a nicer yarn so that I could recommend something that really works for the design. I'm going to be going on a quest this year to do just that. This being the first sample, there are some elements that I'm not 100% happy with. But I think I've got a clear idea on how I can improve this. And yeah, let me know your thoughts. Give me some feedback on this design. <laughs> Another prized possession of mine has been my Ingrid sweater. I've been wanting to make this sweater for so long. I really wanted to make it in the same yarn the Petite Knit did her sample in. So this is Isigur Jensen and Silk Mohair in the shade six. I knit a size small, but either my gauge was slightly looser or I just stretched it in blocking too much. It's the same measurements as a size medium. After I blocked it, I was like, oh my goodness, it's really, really big, but I really grew to love it. Everyone says this about the Ingrid sweater. It's so much fun to knit because of the different sections. You really wanna finish one section because you're looking forward to the next one. So it is a very enjoyable knit. I did the mock neck the way the pattern states. I feel like no one does it. Everyone modifies the neck and does it differently but i think the neck was one of my favorite things about this design the construction is so clever the pattern was an absolute breeze and joy to go through i love everything about this design especially the eyelets i think those are so pretty and it is generally quite impressive design but i don't think it's as hard as it looks i was very happy to fulfill my dream to make an ingrid sweater this year and i love it i wear it all the time i wear it, oh my god i wear it so much of 
course I couldn't go through Christmas without making my dad a sweater. So I made him a zipper sweater, which is so his style. I really enjoyed making this one as well. It was such a quick knit. I think I knit it up in two weeks or so. Since it was a gift knit, I wanted it to be as perfect as I could get it. So I just bought the zipper off of Petite Knits website, but then I brought it to a tailor and she installed the zipper for me. The yarn I used was Drops Andes. And this is a really chunky yarn, so I knitted it quite densely. I think the finished sweater weighed something like 1.2 kilos. I've heard on podcasts that a lot of people don't like how heavy the sweater is. So if you think this might be a concern, you might want to consider making the zipper sweater light. And to be fair, this one was really, really heavy, but that works for my dad, I think. He really enjoyed it and um, I was very happy that I was able to knit something for him. Finally making him a sweater. Similarly to Drops Nepal yarn that I used for the Northland sweater for my brother, I don't love how this one is wearing. I don't think it's pulling as much as the Nepal yarn, although I've literally just gifted it to my dad, so I think we're gonna have to give him a little bit more time. In any case, my dad loves it and wears it basically every day, so that's what matters. As another gift knit, I made my mother a Clotilde sweater. That's actually her name as well. So yeah, I made my mom Clotilde the Clotilde sweater by Knitting for Olive. I used two strands of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Dusty Petroleum Blue which is probably the most beautiful color I have ever seen. I mean, Knitting for Olive is very famous for their color selection. I want to make the same sweater for myself, probably in the same color as well. The only thing I will be doing is I'm not going to knit the cuffs. I'm just going to do large open sleeves. I did have to modify the length of the body. It was way too cropped the way it recommended it, so I knitted it longer. And then strangely enough, I had to shorten the sleeves because they were too long. This is also a top-down raglan sweater, so it's really simple in construction. It's obviously the lace pattern that's more challenging. And with that technique that I mentioned at the beginning of how I follow charts, it was really easy to go through, and I knitted this in five days. Granted, that was a bit dramatic and I didn't sleep a lot, <laughs> but I really wanted to make sure I got this done before I went back home for Christmas. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's on 10 millimeter needles, so there's that satisfying element to it. And I think my mom really wasn't expecting it because obviously this is her second sweater that she gets this year. For Christmas, I obviously had to make my cousin's baby something. So I made Knitting for Olive's baby bear bonnet for her and it's the cutest thing I've ever made. Just look at it, isn't it the most cute thing ever? I use the same yarn that I used for my penny gloves. So it's the Discontinued Drops Baby Alpaca Silk yarn in this really cute pastel yellow color. If you're looking for a quick baby knit, this is so special because who makes a bonnet with bare ears? It's the most memorable gift a baby could get. And finally, the last garment I made this year is this slipover. This is the typical mohair slipover by Typical Bliss. And I used exactly one skein, Noro Hao Nui cotton in the shade 213. It is this gorgeous a variegated gray blue color it was actually the first slipover i've ever made so that was nice it is knitted top down and then you pick up for the ribbing uh at the sleeves and the neck i still need to block it by the way i haven't blocked it it just makes me think of 80s ski trip i love it and that was everything I made in 2023. I really enjoyed sharing all of this with you. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, Woozy by Celine, where I post basically daily updates about all my knits. Let me know your favorite garment that you've made this year. And I hope to see you in a future video.